Hi, it's Alistair from Electric Scotland. This is me do my uh, introduction to my video newsletter or my, my, my newsletter for uh, December the 21st, 2018. So, as you all had Christmas before the next one comes out, I'd like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and hope you enjoy it. And it is a time of year when one can expect to eat more than normal, so. Uh, let's put the scales away for a you know a few days and let's eat and be merry and enjoy ourselves. Yeah, I like that idea. So, in this issue, I've given you my uh, own customized uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year card. Um, this is one that I use to dress the chief, uh, my, the, the kids program that I've got uh, to design the card. Then I did a print scream on it, and then I edited it um, to add uh, Merry Christmas and stuff uh, to it, and I've used it as a as a Christmas card. So, and uh, don't forget my, my postcard program's working again, so if you want to send a, a Christmas um, postcard to someone, you can do that as well. Okay, um, I've given you a wee story about the National Trust for Scotland's uh, internationally around um, three gardens and estate which has uh, gained an inspiring new uh, feature thanks to the generous of American donors. So I put a wee article up on that which I thought you might find of interest. And then on to the news stories. Um, I mean as uh, Parliament in the UK is now closed for the festive season Hopefully stories on Brexit will become less over this festive season and might enjoy ourselves. <coughs> However, um, so I, what I found was two portions of Christmas cake is enough to put you over the drink driving limit. Because it depends what Christmas cake you got. But I do know my mother, when she made a Christmas cake, uh, I don't quite know if it was done daily or weekly or whatever but she made it maybe six weeks before Christmas was due and I think every week she would top up with a little bit more sherry that would soak into the cake and then I think she stopped two weeks before Christmas because at that time that's when she put the, the marzipan on and the icing on and decorate the cake so it matured then for another two weeks so we had it at Christmas but obviously putting all that sherry in means there's a lot of alcohol in it Whoa. And hence that uh, letter saying two portions of Christmas cake, enough to put you over the drink drive limit. And of course, if you've had plum pudding the same day with some brandy custard sauce, which I rather like, that will definitely put you over the limit. So please don't drink and drive or eat too much and, and drive. <laughs> okay. Um... This extraordinary week has changed nothing. It's still May's deal or no deal. Well, as you well know, there's a lot of problems. Um, May wasn't going to get the vote through Parliament. That was clear. And she's going to lose by, it could have been 100 votes, which would be pretty embarrassing. So, um, and from what I can see, the EU aren't interested in giving her any help at all towards what she's trying to achieve. So, hence... Uh, prospect of no deal is larger than ever. Um, now another judgment that came out was the Supreme Court shows how the Union can work. It says today's judgment by the Supreme Court on the Scottish Government's legal continuity bill uh, is fascinating. So we've been waiting for that uh, result for some time so now you can read all about it and, and get think Scotland's take on it. Then Sir Paul McCartney puts on incredible three-hour set in Glasgow. So the Beatles legend shows no sign of slowing down. I actually read that and I, and I enjoyed watching this with three videos that they actually put up along with it. And I enjoyed watching each one. They're just wee clips, but they're good. I enjoyed them. And then I've got two CanZ UK stories for you. The first is the road to CanZ UK free trade. <coughs> um, 
It's basically an article examining why the Closer Economic Relations Trade Agreement, CER for short, between Australia and New Zealand is the ideal agreement by, uh, uh, for Canada and the UK to join and accomplish CANZ-UK free trade. Very interesting story there. And the other one uh, is the US News and World Report. It says the American Media Corporation, based in Washington, D.C., has um, revealed its 2018 rankings for the world's best countries, positioning Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the United Kingdom within the top 13. So that's pretty interesting. Um, Australia appoints a military leader as next Governor General. So I thought those in Australia might, if you haven't heard about it, might like to read about that. Um, also another one, Chinese County uh, pays the price for Vanity Project Binge. <coughs> it's one of their counties which uh, spent a billion or something on a historical um, kind of feature and no one's visiting it. So it's basically money down the drain. And apparently this is actually more widespread in China than we realise. So we've always thought as China is a big powerhouse, but apparently within China, there's a lot of people that are doing these vanity projects, and quite frankly, they're just not working. So they are piling up a lot of debt within their within their country. So I thought that might be an interesting story for you to read to, maybe get a bit more of an insight into China. And of course, as you know. Canada's got three people now held by Beijing over this uh, Chinese one uh, woman that's in court in, in Canada trying to be extradited to the US. That's a bit of a... I haven't featured that story, but you probably have read about it or heard about it on the news. Okay, it says UK will flourish and prosper if it walks away from the EU without a deal. I entirely agree with that. It's an interview with The Telegraph where the Foreign Secretary says that while a no-deal Brexit would cause disruption, the country has faced much bigger challenges in its history. Quite right too. And then the Scottish Samurai of Asian Whiskey Distilling is to be honoured. He was a Scotsman who helped modernise Japan and whose story inspired a pioneering fusion of Scotch and Japanese whisky. Um, I've also given you a link to a, an article from about him from the Japan Times, uh, which is a fairly recent article in November 2011 it was produced, I believe. So the thing is, I was, I, when I, I saw that article, I thought I'll give you a link to my own page on it. But I found to my horror that the page I put you to, which is a good page about him, it contained about a... I think it was a 45 minute documentary on him by the BBC and it's on YouTube. But as usual, the pathetic YouTube have taken a damn thing down so you can't see it anymore. I have actually searched uh, on YouTube and I have found it, but it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of tiny little screen you've got to watch. So you can more or less listen, but not see very much. And also the voice quality is very poor from the original version. So I've, I've changed the, the one that no longer works to this one that does, albeit it's not as good. But it I, I, I really pisses me off, you know, YouTube's getting just terrible. And they're also giving so many adverts now floating through a new, it, it, it's almost not worth, worth using in my view. But having said that, I have found an alternative, and I'll tell you a bit more of that afterwards. Okay, the other story I found was four and a half thousand year old stone circle discovered for the first time. Uh, it's the recumbent stone circle has been um, recorded on a farm in Aberdeenshire. And it's interesting because reading the article, all the locals knew about it, but apparently no one had ever told the antiquarians about it. So, but now that they know about it, they've sent someone out and they've now want to record it. It's a very fine circle, so... 
you want to learn more about that, you can follow that link. And then I, th I thought this was an interesting one. This is a story from CapEx. I always find CapEx come out with some really interesting stories. It says, why millennials are poorer than other generations. Um, I, I mean, it goes into the background. This is quite a decent article. It gives you background uh, to the story. But I thought maybe if you're a millennial, you might like to read it in particular to find out why you're poorer. And for those that are not millennials, maybe they want to understand why the young ones are having so many problems. <clears throat> okay, oh, the next article I found was the Scot who created the vision of English childhood. It's, um, it's an interesting article and um, it's basically about Kenneth Graham's book, The Wind in the Willows. And it's quite likely a lot of you have heard and perhaps even read The Wind in the Willows. I've read it, enjoyed it, many years ago. I haven't read it for a long time, though. But uh, I didn't actually realise that it was, it was a Scot that wrote it, mind you. So that was interesting. Then the next story I have for you. Scotland's first rye whiskey in a hundred years produced at an Arbroath distillery. <clears throat> Because, as you know, we don't make rye whiskey, but apart we used to make rye whiskey. So uh, this is a story about a new one that's been launched. The bottles are £250 each, Great British pounds each, so that's quite expensive. Um, oh yeah, and a Canadian story. It's Bombardier delivers global 7500 jet. It says Canada's Bombardier Incorporated will deliver its first global 7500 corporate jet on Thursday, um, preparing a, or premiering a full size bed and optional ensuite shower. Bombardier is quite a famous company, uh, but at the same time, it's almost the, it's one of those companies that Canada believes is too big to fail. They have been bailed out a number of times, I have to say, but they employ so many people and it's they're still quite high tech, so I think Canada feels we have to keep it going. Um, oh yeah, and, and now that's what I call Brexit. So this is Brexit Central, greatest hits in 2018. It's a compilation of stories throughout the whole year. So while I'm sure a lot of you won't be interested, some of you might be, and I thought, well, as the compilation, it does give you the history over 2018 at least. So I thought you might be interested in looking at it. Uh, Labour's Brexit trilemma. What is the least bad outcome for them, basically? This is an article uh, from Skeptical Scott. And it's quite interesting because it does lay down the issues that Labour has and why it's having these issues and why some kind of compromise will need to be taken at some point. Um, oh yeah, and a very bad story to finish the thing says, Vintage Scotch whiskey is found to be fake. It says more than a third, a third of vintage Scotch whiskies tested at a specialist laboratory this year have been found to be fake. This is a BBC Scotland article. That's just terrible. Okay, so anyway, these are the stories I picked for you this week. Hope you enjoy some of them. Now on to Electric Canadian. Um, I found actually a lot more uh, journals and magazines and stuff. So, I continuing with the Canadian horticulturalist, because I've been enjoying reading that, I have to say. So I've added volume seven this week. Uh, the Canadian Archive reports about the 1887 uh, report. Remember, this is the ones that tell you what they found for the Canadian archives from not only within Canada, but from France, Spain, UK, you know, all over the place. And remember, the earlier, while they tell you everything they add to it, which is fascinating reading anyway, but they usually tell you a few stories at the beginning of it. Uh, tell you how, how they've gone about their work. So I, I usually find them pretty interesting. Don't read the whole thing, but I find them interesting. 
And then the Canadian Annual Review of Public Affairs that I brought to you last week, there are a number of them, and frankly, uh, I'm going to bring you a lot more of these. I've actually added the 1904 issue this time round. But I was reading about the, and I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but it's the general that was sent out by Britain to look at the Canadian Armed Forces and give recommendations of how they should be uh, maintained in Canada. And it's quite a long um, article within the whole review. But I, I really read the whole thing and I was totally... I mean, it just reinforced for me that politicians are the pits. <coughs> I mean, almost everyone thought he was doing a fantastic job at recommending how the, the armed forces, and basically it's a volunteer force in Canada, how they should be organised and run. And everyone was saying he was doing a fantastic job. Then politics raises its ugly head and we get into a whole kind of mess which ends up being the general was basically dismissed from his post as a result of purely political manipulations where politicians looked for their own egos, not for what's best in the country. I'm sick of it up with these politicians. It's a bit like that, um, what's this, Gov in our thing. He's a little weasel, that guy. He always, he's always looks out for himself, doesn't care about anyone else. He'll change, he'll turn on anyone if he thinks he'll get a little bit of benefit out of it. I'm sick of it up of politicians and usually wreck everything. We need to find a better way of being represented in a democracy. I mean, they can't even decide themselves what to do about Brexit. I mean, the British people told them what to do about Brexit. We want out, end the story. And they're all talking about Project Fear and why it's good and why it's bad. I mean, just take the instructions from the British people. We told you, 52% to 48, we want out. Just obey us. That's all you need to do. But no, no, they won't do it. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Canadian Fisherman. I brought you Volume 1 last uh, week. This time I'm bringing you Volume 2 because I enjoy reading it myself. Then I've got a couple of one-offs, a uh, Canadian nurse, I found a quarterly journal, so I put one up for you to read at, it's not that big that one. Then I've got the Canadian Medical Review, there's a whole ton of issues on the Internet Archive, but uh, I found the first volume was printed in 1895, so I thought I'd bring you that one at least. And if you want to read more you can archive, uh, do a search of the Internet Archives. And then Canadian Railway and Marine World. Uh, so that's another interesting one. And then I've got you some videos this week. Uh, first one is about the, um, the North West Mounted Police, uh, which was created in 1895. And it's basically giving you a hundred years of the service because they migrated into coming what we now know today is the RCMP, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, 1895 to 1995. And the beauty of that one, and the next set I've got for you is a trip from Brussels to Calgary and on to Vancouver. This has been done, uh, basically that's eight videos, that set, and I watched a few of them and I thought they were really good. Uh, and all of them are from the public domain, so they will never disappear, unlike YouTube, that always gets rid of blinking videos. It's a waste of, becoming a waste of time if you're trying to do something. Well, historically anyway, because you can't rely on YouTube, that's for sure, Look, absolutely clear. And also they're putting so many adverts up now on, on these YouTubes. Didn't used to do that, but now it's... It's almost like having to watch television again with the amount of advertising you get. So, public archives are the way to go, I think. Um, Electric Scotland. So, what I've got for you this week is Best Newfangled Family Tree. It's the January 2019 Section 2 issue. Remember, she always does Section 2 first, and two weeks later she'll do Section 1. I can't quite remember why that is, actually, but... Uh, why she did it that way around. But anyway, 
it's uh, it's a good read, whichever way you, you read it. Then I've got you some chat books from the Paisley Repository. I found three books uh, of chat books. Each of the books contains several chat books, which contain some interesting stories. Remember, chat books uh, in the old days was a bit like what we might class as a paperback of today. They're really cheap, uh, small books, basically. Um, Archaeological Essays. This is by Sir James Y. Simpson. He was a great scientist and medical man, but he was also interested in archaeological matters. So this is uh, two volumes of his books, which was printed in 1872, and was edited by John Stewart, who was the secretary, or was at that time the secretary of the Society of Antiquaries of Scotland. And so I've added to the foot of his page, because I've got a page about him and the site, so I thought that might be relevant. Then, Clan and McKinnon Society International, I got in their um, January 2019 newsletter, which is full of good stuff. Battle of the Somme, this is a major World War I battle celebrating the 100th anniversary. So it's, it's quite a modern book, uh, so you can have read of that. Then Portraits of the High Officers and Professors of the University of Edinburgh at its uh, Tercentenary Festival, uh, drawn and etched by William Hall. So it's produced in 1884. But obviously some really interesting people were at professors at Edinburgh University in those days. So hope you enjoy reading about some of them. Then Clan Boyd. I've got some information on Clan Boyd from Mike Boyd, who's the Clan Historian. Um, it's quite wordy, so he's actually sent me a, some big word documents, which I've actually uh, made into PDF files. So I put them onto the Boyd History page, and uh, he sent me a huge email. So I put the email up as text, and I put the three articles he sent me as PDFs as links after that so but it contains a lot of great information so if you're a boy I think you're going to enjoy that then the life of the Reverend John MacDonald AM says late missionary uh, minister from the Free Church of Scotland at Calcutta and including selections from his diary and letters and it's done by the Reverend W.K. Tweedy and it's a second edition published in 1849, so if it goes through an extra edition, it's usually pretty popular. And then I have um, Nicola Ochne performed live at the Glenfiddich Fiddle Championship celebration at Blair Castle. This is a YouTube video, it is there at the moment, might not be there tomorrow, but it's there at the moment. And I just thought you might like to listen to her playing, basically. Um, and then I've got a video history of Scotland. Um, it says these BBC videos keep disappearing from YouTube. So I've now found them on the Internet Archive and have now don downloaded them so they won't be lost again. Um, I'm making a habit now of have checking with the Public Archive to see if a version of something is available there. And I'll use those in future because, uh, as I say, YouTube is becoming very... Uh, I don't know. I'm not happy with YouTube at the moment. Okay, so that's what I've got for you. I'll let gone. So lots of good stuff to listen to. I will say the public archive on the Scottish history is five um, hour-long videos, but in fact, on the original series, I think it was eight. So there was... Um, or there might have been sick, but certainly took you up to the opening of the Scottish Parliament. Unfortunately, this sets the, stops well before that, so hopefully so another one or two or three might appear at some point, and I'll keep my eye out for them. Uh, I think I've still got links to the original YouTube ones, and while they work, they'll, they'll stay there, of course, but I thought this way at least I've got a permanent um, you know, copy of them. And coming to the story this week is from time to time I get sent in wee snippets of information on something Scottish or about a Scottish family. 
So here are a couple of such snippets for you to read here. And so the first one is, this is from the Canadian Weather Trivia Calendar of 2002. And the other one's, uh, the following is quoted from Drummer on Foot. So I hope you might enjoy both of those. And um, as I say, that's, that's it. So as I say, just like to wish you all a Merry Christmas. And I'll have another uh, video out and newsletter out between now and New Year. So you can look forward to that as well. As always, I'll put a link under this video to the actual newsletter so you can download and get all the links to the stories I've told you about. As always, love to hear from you. Any comments, feel free. Okay, Merry Christmas. <laughs>